21 years. And uh, I can quote you some sections. There has been much talk about institutional reforms being put in place since May 9, 2018. I applaud the efforts and the palpable changes being made. However, greater introspection is needed, and we need to have some humility to accept that there still remains a litany of unfulfilled promises. History teaches us that legitimate expectations of the people, which are not met, will usually transform into pent of resentment, eventually leading to political backlash. As head of the Parliamentary Caucus on Reform and Governance, I am often asked whether we are missing the woods for the trees, or worse still, willfully turning a blind eye to certain stark realities confronting the people. For instance, if the cornerstone of the rule of law means that no person should be above the law, aren't we being subjected to double standards, reminiscent of the proclamation of George Orwell's Animal Farm, that all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others? Do we listen in earnest to the charge that while the powers that be proclaim the equality of citizens, they have given, they have given power and privileges to a small elite? Since taking over the government, has the fight against corruption been relentless and pursued without fear or favor? I believe it has, and credit must be given where it is due. Quick fixes are usually good for the short term, but to redress the wrongs committed over decades, some latitude must be given to ensure that we do not have ban and remedies, but long-term solutions. Nevertheless, I believe there is a direct correlation between the rule of law and a corruption-free government. I'm using corruption here in a broad sense, which includes abuse of executive as well as lawmaking power, apart from the conventional understanding about receiving, asking for, or giving gratification with a corrupt intent. There's also the overarching question of how our economy is going. Institutional reforms must also entail structuring the economy to ensure robust growth while ensuring fairer and equitable distribution. As alluded to earlier, the rule of law cannot be isolated from the political obligation of establishing economic freedom. By this, I don't mean unfettered free market economics or capitalism with a vengeance, not at all. More to the point, here is Nobel laureate Amartya Sen's development as freedom, where freedom of opportunity, including freedom to access credit, as well as the economic protection from abject, abject poverty remain paramount when we talk about the rule of law or democracy and constitutionalism. It is timely to revisit these because, as Professor Sen argues, development cannot be reduced to just increasing basic incomes or boosting average per capita incomes. That is too simplistic. What is needed is a holistic approach by formulating a package of overlapping mechanisms, to quote Sen, that would progressively enable not just freedom to vote or participate in elections, but also permit the realization of that vast range of other freedoms. Oh, yeah. the